Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Now, I've been wanting to do a review on this rifle for quite a while, but unfortunately, the terrible weather and me having a bit of the man flu, which you might be able to hear in my voice just now, has put me back a bit. But today, we finally have a chance to take a look at one of the rifles that's absolutely stolen my heart when it first came onto the market in late 2018. The Remington Sabre. This is the thumbhole model, and the light is actually not doing it any real justice at the moment. When the sunlight, if we get a bit of sunlight later, when that hits it, you'll see just how gorgeous that stock really is. Look at that. Anyways, I'm getting a little bit carried away, aren't I? So let's do what we usually do with the Remington Sabre, and let's start with features. Once again, I do apologise this review has taken so long to come out after the M16, but as long as we get this one uh, out the way... Uh, all good and proper and then uh, we'll move on to the uh, a few more spring guns and hopefully the normal schedule should resume as long as the weather and such behaves itself so then let's move on to features so here we have the feature section for the Remington Sabre starting from the rear of the gun like we always do we have a rather nicely finished rubber recoil pad here and if you can see it if I pan the camera around just a bit like that you should hopefully see the Remington logo is actually printed in the back of the butt pad which is a nice little bit of attention to detail moving slightly further along we've got the cheek piece here which is quite nicely finished and also stretches around to the other side as the Sabre TH is an ambidextrous rifle so it can be enjoyed by both left-handed and right-handed shooters this is, as mentioned, the thumb hole model, so as you can see here, you've got the rather nice thumb hole, which is nice and comfortable to use, but we'll talk a bit more about that in the handling section. And you've got this really, really nice stickling in here, which is absolutely stunning to look at, it really is. And it is also incredibly deep, which you usually wouldn't expect on a rifle at this price point. I'm hoping that the camera is capturing, you can see just how deep that really is. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely bit of finish to the gun. Another thing that I'm very proud of and quite like with these guns, and they've been doing this since the Express onwards. You might be able to see that. It's a bit dark here today, unfortunately. They put the Remington logo in the bottom of the grip. And you might not, you might be able to see that, might not. I do apologize about that if you can't. But again, it's a little thing they didn't have to do, but they put it there and it is really quite nice to look at. You've got Remington's two-stage adjustable trigger on here, which is the exact same as what you'll find on the Express and most of the Remington rifles, barring the pest controller the and the XGP. Lovely trigger, to be fair with you, as a budget trigger, we'll talk more about it in the handling section, but there's very few complaints when it comes to the Express triggers. It is, as mentioned, an adjustable unit, so you can have a little bit of a play with it and set it exactly how you want it. And you've got the automatic safety, which is the exact same unit as what you'll find on the Expresses, where you've got the safety button there, and you've got the reset switch there if you want to make the gun safe again. Moving slightly further along, you can see we've got a little bit more uh, checkering just up here, which is once again really nicely finished, it's pretty damn deep, and just nice to look at. But again, we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section as to how it feels. As you can see, this is a brake barrel rifle, there is the Warhawk underlever, but to be honest with you, when it comes to these, I saw the Sabre, I saw this model Sabre that we had straight away and I thought, nope, doing that one. Um, <laughs> I really like the Sabre. And slightly further along, we have the silencer on the end here. Now this silencer is not removable, I'm afraid. That is the only thing. Um, you can take it off, but it, you're probably going to have to smash it off, at which point I would be careful because I'm not quite sure what that do to your warranty at this moment in time. I've yet to ask SMK. Personally, I'd leave it on, but we'll see what happens. One other little thing I'll mention is that you might be noticing that this action looks incredibly familiar. And this is what I said to the guys at SMK before they came over. I said, surely that is just an Express, looks like an Express XP action in a brand new stock. And they said, yes and no. It is an Express action or an XP action, but they've actually further refined the design. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when it comes to the handling section of this review. But... They are genuinely, from what I can what I can tell and feel, there is definitely something different going on inside there. They've either polished it out a bit more, they've changed something, or something like that. Again, we'll talk a bit more about it in a second, we get to the handling section, but there is definitely something different going on inside there, and we'll go a little bit more in depth with that in a minute. So that's the features of the rifle. Oh, and you also get a 3 number 40 scope included as standard. It is a, a just a standard duplex scope, but it is you've got up to 9 times zoom there on top. Mounts come with it free of charge along with the covers as well, and it's just a it's a nice little scope to get you going, to be fair. But once again, when it comes to handling and such, we'll have a look down that and we'll give you a more in-depth um, description as to what that's really like to put to your eye and things like that. 
But overall, from a, a feature standpoint, from a rifle that SRPs at around £220, though you can get it cheaper if you know where to look, cough, cough, um, it is a stunning gun. It really is. Features-wise, it's great. And as I'm sure you know, as I've said multiple times already, it is a beautiful thing to look at. This, Unfortunately, this light is not doing us any favours. We actually, sort of ramble, but we actually had one that was truly was jaw-dropping. And it almost, the way that the grain was done in the wood, it was almost like, um, almost like a rainbow going straight through it. It was an absolutely gorgeous thing, it really was. Anyways, we're rambling. Let's move on now to weight. Let's get the thing weighed and see exactly who it might suit and if it may just be a little bit too heavy for some. Let's find out. Let's get the scales out and let's see what she's doing. So then, how heavy is the Sabre TH? You can see here we're completely off the floor. There's my shoes. Um, and she weighs in at 8.56 pounds. So not the heaviest rifle on the market, but also not the lightest either. And we're going to, going to go a little bit more in depth with how it actually feels when we put it to the shoulder in the handling section, because as many people will know, the dead weight isn't really what you can go by when it comes to shouldering it, because depending on how a rifle's balanced, it can make them feel heavier or lighter than what they really are. So let's move on to the handling section now, and let's talk about how the Sabre feels when it's put to the shoulder. Okay then, so Remington Sailor, what's she like when she's put to the shoulder? Well, as we mentioned in the weighing section, depending on how a gun's balanced, it can make the rifle feel better or worse. And to be fair, to me it doesn't feel like an eight pound gun, if I'm being brutally honest. It really doesn't, the way that it's balanced. I'm not really wobbling anywhere, it's not front heavy by any means. In fact, the balance, if you can see that there, is pretty much directly dead centre of the gun. <laughs> It is a really nicely balanced thing, and that does mitigate the weight somewhat. The stock does feel really, really nice, and I do apologise that the light was not showing just how deep the checkering in that is here, the starkling and such. That is gorgeous to put to the hand, it really is, and I don't know if you can see that now. And we couldn't really show you it earlier, there's the Remington logo, just so you can see I'm not lying in the, uh, the grip there. But it is a really nice thing to put, on, put to the shoulder, and you can keep it incredibly still. Regarding the scope, the scope is your more sort of basic um, 3 to 9 by 40 scope. It's a duplex reticle, which I actually quite like. The only thing I will say is that the reticle is slightly thick, like you will see on some budget end scopes and such. But for shooting, say, 20 to 25 yards, I mean, it'll be absolutely fine. If you've watched our review of the Remington Express Compact, one of the first reviews that we did, um, I had some issues at 25 yards because the Express Compacts only came with a 4x32 and 4 times zoom with a sort of reticle this thick, I was losing the, um, the bull on the target. But with this, you've got a little bit of zoom here you can play with. Um, the only thing I will say is that you don't have any adjustable range as such on this scope. So if you start putting it 9 times zoom at 20 yards, you're going to get a hell of a lot of blur on there. But we can pr probably, let's have a look, pump it up, I'd say to around 6 times. Yeah, we're on six at the minute. Six times, and she's still pretty damn crystal clear. So it's perfectly usable, but at the same time, it's not going to be something like you can't expect something like a, a Hawk Sidewinder or Discovery or anything like that on top of there. It's a free scope, but it's better than what you might think it is. It definitely does its job. But let's have a look now. Let's uh, have a look about the trigger and such and the automatic safety. Cock the barrel down like so. She is a brake barrel. That silencer is plastic, um, which it's a little off-putting. It's basically, if you've experienced the Remington Express XP, it's very, very, very similar to that. It's pretty much the exact same. Um, it's fairly substantial feeling in your hand, but if it was metal, I know I put the price up, that's the only thing, but if it was metal, it'd be just that little bit better. But, close her up. Action feels nice and solid to close there. And as you can probably, or hopefully see, the safety button has popped out here. So to fire the rifle, very much like the design you see on a fire arc and things like that, tap that button in and you're ready to rock and roll. But if you're not, and this is where I do prefer it over um, the fire arc design, and I say that as a man who has a fire arc and actually had one as his 21st birthday present, thank you mother, um, <laughs> you, if you want to make the gun safe again, you touch this lever here, and you can see that, it puts the safety straight back out. And the gun is once again safe. With my 97, it's a case of having to recock the big old thing all over again and things like that. And we used to do, well, we used to do it at pest control, we used to do it in a defender. So imagine trying to do that in something tight spaces like that. And as I'm sure you can imagine, I don't really fit in those very well anyway. So, safety back off. And let's have a little go at the trigger and see how she recalls. 
That's really good. <laughs> Let's have another go. Let's have another go here. So you can see there, that trigger's not got a whole lot of travel on it at all. And this is straight out the box, this trigger. No adjustment or anything has been done. So let's turn that back off. And just, if you can see my, hopefully you can, my trigger finger there, got it in a safe direction. That's it. The other thing, and this is what leads me back to say that the action on this, although very similar, is changed compared to the standard Express, is that there's no twang at all with these. It's a, and here's another noise to add to the collection, it's a thunk and off it goes. There's, I've yet to have a saver that actually twanged. That was the only potential downside with some of the Expresses, is that a couple of them you'd occasionally, you get a real twangy beast out of the box. It'd still shoot nicely, but you would definitely get that punk when you pull the trigger. With this though, have a little listen again, there's nothing there, just thong and off she goes. It is a, a, a lovely thing to shoot, I've got to be honest. It's, it's a, although it's not the budget, proper budget, end of budget, it's a 220 quid. It's still a hell of a substantial feeling thing. And it's such a, it's got such a nice trigger as well. That Remington unit for a budget end trigger is a really, really nice setup. I've yet to see anybody really complain about the Remy unit. But that, to be honest, from a handling perspective, there's really nothing to complain about, I've got to be honest, that is a lovely, lovely thing to shoot, it really is. Of course this doesn't mean anything if the barrel isn't a whole lot of good and it won't group for love nor money, but, well, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do because I know that the Remington barrel is actually a pretty good one from the tests that I've done with the Expresses and such like that and love it or hate it, even the big old Thunder Scepter, which we haven't reviewed just yet, that great big gas ram. You might not like the way it looks, but it was an accurate old brute, I'll put it that way. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that is nice. Not a whole lot of recoil to it, no twang, just tunk and off she goes. I'd say the lock time doesn't feel hugely fast, but it's definitely not the slowest that I've ever shot. And thankfully, it does at least, it barely recalls at all when you put it to the shoulder anyway so granted this is the 2 so it will kick less than the 177 but yeah you've got there's no complaints on this end like i said maybe a little bit of tune in if you can put that lock time a deer a little bit quicker maybe anybody out there and you do that and you'll absolutely it'll be un, almost untouchable i'll put it that way i'm madly in love with the save and i know i sound really biased and i do try to pick faults with every gun but there's, at the moment, very little for me to complain about. But before we get to the accuracy section, let's do some chronographing. And let's see, just out of interest, how consistent this thing is through the chrono. Now, you know with the PCPs, we do a full shot string. Obviously, I'm not going to do that with this because, well, we'll be here to the end of time. It's a spring gun. Um, what we'll do, we'll put 20 shots through it and see how consistent it is. This gun's not running at all by any means necessary, not even close. But... We'll see what it's doing. We might see some slight inconsistencies in the chronos. We might see that it's absolutely flat as anything. But these are advertised as full power rifles, so let's put that advertising to the test. Let's bring out the chronograph and let's see if it uh, puts a huge smile on my face there as well. So, chrono time. Okay then, so chronograph time. I do apologise if you can hear water hitting the ground around here in the background. That's not me doing a wee. That is because it is now pouring down. As I said, it's taken a long time to get this done. I know I've had man flu, but on top of that, it's because of the bloody weather. You'd never think it was June, would you? Right, or well, maybe in the UK you would, <laughs> to be fair. Right, moving on. We've got the rifle sitting here. We've got the camera stand there. It looks like I've flung it against the rifle. Our food for today will be the HN Remington Field Target Trophy pellets. And we've got the chronograph set up here. We've got the phone plugged in and we'll have the camera sitting down so as it's facing the camera like the phone sorry like so so we can see exactly what's going on as each shot goes through so then without further ado let's get the camera and everything set up and let's see what the remington can do through the product Okay then, so chronograph time. How did the Remington Sabre do? 
Well, we had a 20 shot string as we explained let's just wheel that down there now so you can see exactly uh, where we started and when we finished and it's pretty damn good if I'm honest with you like they said it is a full power rifle this one is not run in I can guarantee you that um, and she's already hitting 11.3s there and she goes up to say it seems to hover around the mid high 10s to the very low 11s so she's pretty much right there already and it will only get a bit more consistent and the power will gently creep up slightly the more it's run in when it comes to consistency, it's also pretty damn impressive. You can see here, you've got a max spread of 18 FPS throughout the entire 20 shots, and standard deviation is only 4.42 feet per second per shot. Now that is pretty damn good. Now, just to put that into perspective, if we go back now, and the other day we put a HW80 through our chrono, and you can see here, don't pay any real attention to the, the power as such, to be honest, ten, around 10 and a half, that's still pretty damn good. But although the consistency is better, spread 13 FPS, that's bloody good, and standard deviation of only 3.45, you need to bear in mind that the Remington is only one foot per second off of the standard deviation and only five worse with the spread. Now you need to consider that with this, as you can see, we only did the 10 shots. So the Remy's done twice the shots and it's only one feet per second worse when it comes to deviation and five worse when it comes to spread. You can see now why I sound so happy when I'm talking about the Sabre. That is a bloody good result by any means. But that's it for consistency. I think we can all agree that the Sabres definitely do what they're supposed to do when it comes to that. But next we have to move on to accuracy. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably going to wait for another day to do this because we've had a hell of a downpour here and as you can probably see out there it's now really wet and it's going to come down really wet again in a second so we're going to maybe give it a day come back here hopefully my nose won't be quite so blocked then so i won't sound like edward Miliband quite so badly and uh yeah we'll move on and uh, do the accuracy testing hopefully when it's a bit warmer a bit drier and a bit less windy so then i'll see you in 24 hours Okay then, so accuracy test time. We've seen what the rifle's doing through the chrono. Let's see what it's doing downrange. We've got our rest set up here. We will be moving the table across to the left so as we can see the target a little bit better when it comes to actual shooting time. Move down here, you'll see the order in which we'll be shooting the, uh, the pellets through the rifle. You'll see top left where we'll start is the super domes. Then we've got the rifle premium series uh, pellets. Bottom left will be the Remington Thunder Field Target Trophy or HN FTT pellets. Dead center will be the JSB Exact Jumbos. And bottom right we've got our wild card, the SMK Victory Shock pellets for a bit of fun. The target, as you might be able to see, is just over there. That's our 25 yard range. Regarding wind and weather conditions, it is a bit more still today, but as you can see, there is still definitely a bit of gust going around as well. So I'll be doing my best to try and negotiate around that. So that's the target and the rifle setup. We'll do five shot groups with each pellet, see which one it likes the best. So let's get on to it. 25 yards accuracy test with the Remington Sabre. Okay then, so 25 yard group with the Remington Sabre thumb hole with five shots per group with the five different tins of pellets. First thing I'm gonna mention is you might notice that there's a slight judder as we've actually had to put two different pieces of footage together to finish the accuracy testing um, what we was doing. And the reason behind that was I actually had a phone call whilst I was filming. Um, so I had to sort of stop the camera and then restart again. As we all know, the, cam the batteries on these cameras do not last very long at all. And I had to sort of uh, economize what I could. But starting with the super domes here, you can see out the gate it did not disappoint at all. Let's put a five pence piece next to it there. And you can see it would quite easily be eaten by the five pence piece. Granted, these groups were done from a rested position. I believe I showed the, um, 
the rest bag that we had uh, before we started filming. And you've got to sort of take our results here with a grain of salt compared to some of our older reviews perhaps, as a lot of them was actually shot offhand, whereas these are being shot obviously off a of, of rest, so the results will be slightly tighter maybe. Or at least you might think that, until you get to uh, maybe a few of the other pellets, where the results are a bit more uh, colourful, shall we say. You've got the Rifle Premium Series pellets here, which did an absolutely stunning job in the HW77 when we did our underlimb shoot-off video. And well, we couldn't quite replicate the results here today. We've got two or three in that one hole there, and then we've got two more just coming off down here. Bit all over the place, not even any point in putting a coin down there and seeing if we can cover that up with a coin shotgun. So we'll move on from there. Next we've got the HN FTTs, or Remington FTTs, and these did really well. Again, we'll put the five pence next to it here. We had one flyer, that could have been me, that could have been a dodgy pellet. There was a little bit of gust on the day, but at 25 yards I don't think it's going to be that extreme, if we're being honest. It shot really, really well. It is such a shame that we had that one flyer going off there, but it fits under that five pence piece pretty damn nicely, if we're being honest. After that, the main upset for me was the JSB Exact Jumbo Diablos. Although this group here, I know you say that's not five shots. Well, there's a, you may have, uh, when you watch it back, there's a reason for that. That is not just JSB. Um, our wild card decided to start invading other pellet groups, which makes this much more untidy than what it really is. But the JSBs, even so, were still a little bit scattered all over the place. Pay no attention to these two holes here, as this is what we use to pierce the target onto the uh, block of wood that we have, so as we have no ricochets and things like that. That is simply through the nails and the wood. This is the group here, and it is a little bit scattered a bit all over the place. So speaking of wildcard, we then, as they do sometimes, but our absolutely stellar results, we had the SMK Victory Shock Pellets. There it is. <laughs> no, the rest of it is up here. We had one shot here, I believe there's one or two here, and the rest of them went over here. Absolutely no hope at all with the victory shocks. Um, they're about as bad, if not slightly worse, than the, the um, Rifle Premium series pellets. But overall, when it finds a pellet that it likes, the FTTs were absolutely superb. And the Super Domes were, again, absolutely superb. It really doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And I do like this, as this is a case where it's not style over substance. That is a genuinely fantastic group. And the best part that uh, I'm sure we'll all appreciate is that it's done with a not overly expensive tin of pellets. The Super Domes, they are real top quality, but they're much cheaper than what you'll find JSB Jumbos and such for. And they're even cheaper than the Rifle Premium Series, which is... Uh, Again, a lovely little touch and your wallet will appreciate it. So accuracy wise, I think it's quite clear to say that the Remington Sabre thumbhole does not disappoint. But there's more to a rifle than simply accuracy, it all has to come together as a package. So let's have a talk about the Remington Sabre a little bit more when we get to our final verdict, which we'll head off to right now. Okay then, so Remington Sabre thumbhole review. What do we like, what don't we like, and who will it or won't it suit? Well, first things first, we'll start with a looks perspective. Again, this is completely um, opinionated, of course. You may, you may absolutely hate it, but I'm not going to lie. I am madly in love with the way this thing looks. For a gun that retails at £220, the sheer amount of work that has gone into this stock and just what they look like is absolutely superb. It is beach, it is not walnut, but the way it's been stained is absolutely jaw-dropping. It really is. You've even got the, uh, the Remington logo, you can see it a little bit better now, stamped into the, uh, the grip there. It is a gorgeous looking thing. The only thing that lets it down slightly when it comes to looks is the big plastic silencer on the end. Don't get me wrong, it is a well made big plastic silencer, but at the same time it does maybe spoil the look on the front end just a little bit. Everything else is made beautifully. That just lets it down a tiny little bit. It can be removed, but it's one of those where you actually have to break it before you can get it off. It will not unscrew or anything like that, which is a bit upsetting, but it's not the end of the world. It does at least feel quite nice when it's in the hand, and as mentioned, there's no real rough edges or anything like that on it. it I like that on it. It is at least made quite nicely. You do get the 3 to 9 by 40 scope as standard on top, which is a slight upgrade as to what you used to get with the, um, the standard expresses and things like that. That was either a 4x32 or you get the 3 to 9 by 32 on top. They have gone to a 3 to 9 by 40 now. It's a standard duplex reticle, but at the same time, it does do the job. It's fairly nice and clear. The only thing is, because you, um, you haven't got your ranges and such on the front, you can't set the rifle perfectly as you would, um, like, say, you'd say, uh, how could I put it? 
six times zoom, shooting at 25 yards, put it to 25, anything like that. You can't do that with this, there's no range, so you are limited by the amount of zoom that you can have. Um, 25 yard shooting, we had it on around eight times zoom and it was still pretty clear. Nine times it started to get a little bit blurry and was losing the reticle ever so slightly. Again, the reticle is only a duplex reticle. It is reasonably thick, that is the only thing. If you've had a standard express, you'll know what the reticle is going to be like on this. It's not terrible by any means, but it's a little bit thicker than what I'd like it to be. But it is a scope that's provided with the gun, scope and mount. So at the same time, you can't really complain about that. It'll definitely get you shooting, don't worry about that. Overall feel of the gun is lovely. The checkering and such feels absolutely beautiful to your hand. It's balanced really, really well. It is slightly heavier than some other guns out there. It's still not a heavyweight by any means at all. Um, I actually think my 97 is actually heavier than this without a scope, <laughs> for instance. But it's not a super lightweight gun either. Um, but handling is good. The shot cycle is also really quite nice. There's not a whole lot of recoil to it. It is purely vertical what happens. There's no wacky side-to-side -side motion like you can get with some guns. It's literally just up, down, and that's it. And there's not a whole lot of it either. Um, what well, I will say, the lock time didn't feel especially fast. Um, it wasn't slow. It was sort of middle-of-the-line sort of thing. It just nothing special. To be fair, it's nothing that's going to upset you about the gun. It might make the gun a little bit more hold sensitive than a rifle that's uh, got a faster lock time as such. More time to make a minute error, for instance. But at the same time, it's not terrible. And if we're being honest, most of the people that buy these are going to strip that, polish it inside, and such like that. And that lock time is going to go up. And when you do that, this is going to be an absolute monster. The tuning potential on this is insane. It really is. But, moving on, that's a large lorry pulling away, just uh, just in front of us, just now. Um, moving on, um, accuracy-wise and consistency, we'll start with consistency. We did a 20-shot group this time, as you can see, if we scroll all the way back up here. Standard deviation is only 4.42 feet per second per shot, and we had a maximum spread of 18 FPS. This rifle is not running not even close. You can see it's still brand new, there's not a single mark or anything like that on it. It's not being blooded or anything like that, I'll put it that way. And it's already only got a standard deviation of 4.42. And to put that into comp uh, comparison, like we looked at a second ago, there's a Virac HW80 we put through here that did half the shots and was only one feet per second better when it comes to standard deviation and it was only five FPS better when it comes to total spread. Going by memory here, but I believe it was only five. So that puts into just perspective how nice these guns really are. The action, again, is an express action, but at the same time it has been further tweaked. And the shot cycle and such, and the lack of twang, you'll really notice it, especially if you're coming off of a, a normal express, which as mentioned already, they were twangy beasts when you take them out of the box. Moving now on to the most important part, which is accuracy. This was not a letdown, at least if you look on the left hand side. <laughs> Over here things get a little bit more haywire, but the super domes were absolutely pellet on pellet on pellet, and the FTTs would have been the exact same if not for the fact that we had one little flyer down there. That could have been user error, it could have been the gust, it was a bit gusty yesterday, and it could also be simply down to maybe we just had one slightly dodgy pellet in the tin. But there's absolutely no complaints there. That I'd happily put that up against maybe even a HW80 and see the difference, and I don't think you'll be seeing much, I'll put it that way. But overall, the Remington Sabre, it is a lovely, lovely bit of kit. I know I say, uh, how can I put it, no gun is perfect, and I'm trying to pick it apart as best I can. As I said, the silence is not great, maybe, and the it might be a little bit too heavy for some. But that is genuinely pretty much all I can think of. And I do apologise if there's anybody out there that's expecting me to maybe tear into this a little bit more. But I'm being honest, there's very, very little not to like about this gun. And it does almost pain me to say that because I, I do like finding faults, but that is pretty much all I can come up with. Maybe some, if you're expecting a record trigger, you won't find it. Maybe that's one I could say, but at the same time... The Remington unit is a lovely unit, it really is. For a budget gun, you can tweak it, it's a proper adjustable two stage, you can feel the second stage there is nice. The travel length on the actual trigger itself is very small before that shot finally goes off. It's nice to reach, and again, what a grip you've got trying to get to it as well. 
<laughs> but it's a lovely gun, the Remington Sabre. It really is. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys and girls. This is our first episode of our uh, Springer comeback season, shall we say. Again, I do apologise for the amount of time this has taken to get this video review up and running. Um, I'm still a little bit uh, snotty, shall we say, at the minute. I have had a bit of man flu, and the weather has been absolutely atrocious. But we're back on the ball again now. We've got the Remington Sabre up and running. I'm open to suggestions for our next review. I do have a couple of uh, ideas myself already. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you need any more information, get in touch with us at bigdansairguns.co.uk. And as long as we've got a Sabre or such in stock, we'll let you try the rifle before you buy it. Thanks for getting in touch, everyone. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and take care.